Hey guys, just wanted to say you guys really need to thank Josie for me doing this, especially doing this interview looking like this. The raw, real deal here. So, anyway, I'm going to give this video stuff a go, and for Josie, I'm going to try not to giggle too much. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for all your hard work, Josie. Love you guys. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. Wow, I was just watching the whole Nick Carter dance-off thing the other day, and I seriously think I said those exact words. I just kicked my leg up on a Backstreet Boy. Did I really just do that? You know, from Riding Mechanical Bulls, which I did win, by the way. Um, cat fight after cat fight, singing to John Cena's music backstage. I mean, you name it, we've done it. But I do look back and think, man, I can't wait to have another ladder match. Table match, I'm sorry. Going through a table, oddly enough, was kind of fun. Um, I guess I'm just kind of sick in that way. You know, I've gotten hit by ironing boards and buckets and everything in between. And, you know, good, bad, and the ugly, I've enjoyed it all. Alright, next question. Let's talk about that flawless walking boot of yours. Long story short, what happened? What's the official update? You guys like that boot, don't you? I mean, I had to wear it. So why not bling it out, right? Got to make it flawless. Um, truth is, you know, I kicked Layla in the head one too many times, and her head is just that hard. No, seriously though, um, working a house show with Natalia, so all you guys, complete blame is on Natalia. Just one of those freak things. Um, broke my big toe, tore the joint capsule in it, and partially tore the MCL. To this day, I still can't get a regular shoe on because of the swelling inside my bone. But comes with a territory and uh, wear it with pride. It's going to take a lot more than a messed up foot to keep me out of the ring. Moving on. It's Tuesday. From the moment you wake to the moment you go to bed, what's a day in the life of Michelle McCool like? Duh. Flawless. No, I'm joking. Um, I don't know. I normally try to sleep in as much as possible because Tuesdays are very long days for us. Um, definitely get in a workout and I like to get to the arena early. Um, I like to get there, get settled in the locker room, you know, get my head on straight and uh, get prepared for the day. It's a long uh, day ahead of us. I know that every Tuesday going in and you know whatever they throw at us, whether it's a two minute match, a 30 second pre-tape, a 15 minute match. Yeah, I'm just joking on that one. Whatever it is though, I mean, I gotta get my head on straight and give it all I've got and try to, you know, make the, the, the most out of what we've got. Whether it's, you know, like I said, 30 seconds, two minutes, 10 minutes, or 12. Um, go out there, have fun, and leave my heart on the line. After that, I crash into bed because normally we have about two or three hours before we have to wake up and catch early flights on Wednesday mornings. That's it. I know it's not that exciting, but those are my Tuesdays. <laughs> hey, women's wrestling isn't what it used to be. I mean, it's true. It's not what it used to be. And I think it's going to constantly be changing from, you know, today, tomorrow, and forever. You look back and you had, you know, during the Attitude Era, you had Lita and Trish and Steph and... Jazz and Victoria and you know all these girls really mixing it up getting down and dirty and you know I miss that I like that that's what got me hooked you know we've been through it all broad panties matches playboy matches evening gown matches you name it whatever kind of match they could throw at us I think we've done but you know we're always trying to push that barrier I'd rather go out there and get in trouble for doing something too tough or that looked too good than to go out there and you know just stick to nothing but girly stuff. Um, I guess that's the tomboy in me that comes out. But, you know, we, we try to give the fans a nice mix of what they want. They want sexy, they want smart, and they want powerful. And that's what we try to do uh, no matter what the situation is. So, and, might I add, we try to do that on a PG, in a PG way, I should say. Um, but, you know, it's going to keep changing, and that's just going to depend on what the fans want, what WWE wants, and ultimately what Vince McMahon wants. And... Whatever he wants, that's what we try to give him. That's it.
Unfortunately, your match was cut down at WrestleMania. Now, how do you guys know that? Y'all think you know everything. Luckily, your faithful followers got a taste of the dream match between Trish and yourself, though we can't help but to think other participants in the match were snubbed. Were there any cool spots planned for Layla that didn't get to happen? Snooki and, dare we say, Vicky? I'd like to say that we had a pretty good little story put together that obviously um, did get cut down, you know, but it, it happens. We know that going in. We know that every single week, and it is what it is. You know, you go out there and you just give it your best and hope that the fans want more. You know, I think being in the ring with Trish, that was, that was a lot of fun. It was amazing. You know, I think there's some a lot of cool things that Morrison and Dolph didn't get to do. Me and Layla, you know, we always have funny things planned. And Vicky, Vicky's just funny, period. Speaking of Trish, she managed to last six years in the business. She has since made special cameos here and there and now a tough enough trainer. So that's got us thinking. If you retire, will we get to see you as a brunette too? Um, you know, I've got this white little piece of my wife beater on covering up my roots right now. To be completely honest, I'm not sure what color my hair is these days. I grew up with white hair, and uh, it gets darker in the winter, lighter in the summer, and um, I'm not real sure what's underneath now, so I have no idea. I'm going to have to try on a few wigs before I decide what hair color I'm going to end up with. Time will tell. Oh, this is a tough one. Sadly, roster cuts happen. We understand that by spending so much time with your co-workers, they become more like family. But say someone close gets released. How does one prepare for that? And is there anyone that you've fallen out of touch with that you would love to give a shout out to? I don't think you can ever prepare for that because honestly, half the time we find out by looking online as well. And I can't tell you, you know, there's been several occasions where... I didn't find out till the next week at TV when rumors are swirling, you know, so-and-so got released, what's the deal, and we are sometimes, most of the time, the last ones to, to find this stuff out, you know, and it is hard, especially when you're close to somebody, you know, um, it's rare to find true friends in this business, and when you have someone that you're close with that no longer works with you, it definitely affects you mentally. If you have close loved ones that you, you grow closer to week after week that are no longer with you, then... You know, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't hard. Um, of course, I don't think it's any secret. You know, some of my best friends are Tori, Charmel, Lisa, Victoria. Um, and I miss them dearly. Absolutely miss them dearly. You know, it, it's sad when people get released, especially people that get released that you feel like have so much talent still to give. Um, you know, Mickey, we had some great matches. Uh, Maria... I love her dearly. I love her as a friend. Um, I can say that she never once did anything to me or me to her or she was somebody that always, you know, stood up for me and I hope that she is doing great and I wish her nothing but the best. We definitely had some fun on the, the live events. Okay, we can't believe this is something you hadn't shared before. You actually filled out paperwork for the original Tough Enough. So it's a safe bet to say that it, if anyone had doubted you before, becoming a diva is something that had always been on your mind, huh? Have you ever thought what could have been? Yes, I think what could have been all the time. I think, hey, if I'd have gone through Tough Enough and been a Tough Enough reject, would people still hate on me like a diva search reject? You know, it is what it is. You can always ask what if. You can what if the world away, but... Yes, it is true. Obviously, I'm not lying about always being a fan. I still have the paperwork that I filled out to this day and just never sent in because I began my teaching career. Um, everything happens for a reason. Thank goodness the Diva Search came out and, you know, that I became one of the Diva Search rejects. That's it. And might I add to that last question that I think I would have done a darn good job on Tough Enough. I think I would have lasted with the guys because I'll tell you right now, Bill DeMott is one scary man that is not afraid to put you through a killer workout. And I endured that at Deep South every day with him. And uh, I like to say, I think I hung in there pretty well. So, uh, you know, who knows?
I definitely think I'd be a darn good tough enough trainer as well in case anybody out there is watching I'm just throwing it out there maybe who knows All right, y'all are trying to get me in trouble with this next question, Josie. Let's play the diva name game now. We'll list a few things and you'll give us a diva's name and say why. Oh boy, here goes. Funniest diva. Oh, past, definitely Lisa. She is the funniest person I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, right now, Vicky is stinking hilarious. I mean, she doesn't care, which cracks me up. Uh, most serious diva. Uh, most serious? I don't know. Um, hmm. Is it bad that I have to think about that? I'm not sure. Maybe me. I don't know. Um, next one. Most inspiring diva. Hmm. I gotta go back to Vicky again. I mean, look where she came from. A heat-seeking missile. She goes out week after week and gets booed out of the buildings. I mean... Say what you want to say, but that, that, my friend, is talent, which inspires me. Um, craziest diva, Layla, 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 Layla. That is one crazy individual, and I love every crazy bone in her body. Diva you miss the most. Again, Charmel, Tori, Lisa, I miss them dearly. Diva with the most luggage, Natalia, the girl doesn't know how to pack. Oh, and Kelly Kelly. Add her to that list. She opens up her suitcases and it's like it throws up all over the room. Um, most inappropriate diva? Yeah, I'm not answering that. And the diva that acts like a diva? And last. MichelleMcCool.net turns six years old today. Is there anything that you'd like to say to your faithful followers? Happy birthday, MichelleMcCool.net. Um, my faithful followers, I thank you in the sincerest way. Um, from the bottom of, bottom of my heart, you guys, you know how many haters I have out there, but all it takes is going to MichelleMcCool.net, seeing the hard work that Josie and everyone else there um, puts into the website, and just all the incredible things y'all have done for me. I mean, it just, it really warms my heart. So, thanks guys. I hope this video does a little bit of justice, though it can't compare to what y'all have done for me. Thanks guys. You just ain't ready for this woman's rock steady. You're not ready. No, you're not ready. You're not ready.